Welcome back to Hello, how are you? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Life Country Dunabob. If you have already subscribed to my channel, press the bell icon to get the latest updates. In today's class, we are going to do lesson number 13 of Who the Long Ada Simply Songs of Answers by G. Moshe, Volume 2, Millennium Edition, recommended by CBSC Board for Class 11 and Class 12, published by Goel Publishers and Ashit Cleaver. Right. All my other videos based on this particular textbook. Uh, for class 11th are present in the playlist titled GMOJ class 11 CBSC. The link to the playlist is provided in the description box below. So we are to do chapter number 13. As you know, grammar will be discussed separately in future. Right, so we are today discussing the culture in this Austria portion, the text and the back portions. Right, so the chapter, the text of the chapter is titled as Animo. The fawns, animals of fawns. Okay, interesting. Let's start reading with the passage then. <coughs> Let's start reading the passage then. Les écrivains nous ont souvent raconté des histoires de bêtes. Hmm. Okay, so bet. Bet, like in day-to-day -day conversation, it could be used for fool. But in this context, bet means animals. Okay. Another translation of bet is beast. So there are numerous translations of the same word in a different, different context, right? Beast, animal, right? Different, different translations are there. So the writers often narrate to us the stories of animals. Qui ne connaît les fables de la fontaine? Who doesn't know the fables of fontaine? Jean de la Fontaine, the writer who wrote Pablo de la Fontaine, right? Plein de bête à plume ou à poil, de bête qui pique ou qui mord, qui serve à l'homme ou qui lui nuise, d'animaux domestiques et d'animaux sauvages. So, let's talk about the, like, what, what sort of animals we come across in the fables of Fontaine. So, full of animals having Plume. Plume is what? Feathers. Okay. Plume. Feathers. Who are poil? Fur. Fur. Okay. Uh, the animals who peak. Peak is sting. Okay. It's the verb conjugation with third person plural. Peak means to sting. Right, and mod bite, okay, like um, it's most probably an ER ending verb, that's what I can make out on looking at the conjugation, it, the both of the, both of the tenses are looking like ER ending verb, right, so with third person plural, it's conjugated as this, mod, right. Qui serve à la homme, the animals who serve the man or the humans, or the ones who harm the human. The animal domestic, the domestic animals, and the animal sauvage, the wild animals. Ainsi, ainsi in this context means as well as, ainsi la lièvre et le lapin, la loup et l'ouze, la renard, la cigogne, et tant d'autres. So we have like plenty of variety in these fables, right? So apart from these animals, uh, as well as we have hare, and we have rabbit, lièvre, L-I-E-V-R-E, e with an accent grave. Lièvre means hare, and lapin means rabbit, L-A-P-I-N, rabbit. La loup, L-O-U-P, loup. La loup, the wolf, A. Lose. O U R S. It's not ours, it's ooze. Ooze is bear. La renard, the fox. La cigogne, uh, the stork. We came across this word in the previous chapter as well. Et tant d'autres. And many others. Mais les ooze, les ooze sont sa fond rare. Même dans les montagnes, les loups ont déjà disparu de nos forêts. But the bears are seen rarely in the fables, okay. 
even in the mountains, okay, in the mountains also they are seen a bit rarely. Uh, the fox, the wolves, Lelu, the wolves are already disappeared from our forests. Il ne vive plus guerre que dans les contes et les légendes. Vous, vous avez lu peut-être l'histoire de la chèvre de Monsieur Seguin raconté par Alphonse Daudet. Alphonse Daudet is another writer. So, chèvre, the story of a goat. Chèvre is a goat. Okay. So, <sighs> the wolves have disappeared, right? They are not living anymore uh, to fight uh, that in the tales and in the legends. You have that. Perhaps the story of the goat of Mr. Seguin, told by the writer Alphonse Doré. Cette chèvre en avait assez d'être attachée dans un clos. Clos, C-L-O-S, clos means enclosure or chamber, right? Elle voulait être libre, libre. Un jour, elle gagna la montagne, mais là, elle rencontra Le loup. Okay, all the tenses are in past sample. Don't worry, past sample will be discussed soon on my channel. Okay. Uh, I hope once I'm done with the first 17 chapters, I can start with discussing one by one the grammar topics, right? Because it's not good to pile up so many grammar topics. Like, I will do the culture series of series, chapter 17, then all the grammar topics which are not being done on my channel. As of now, uh, they will be discussed, and then I'll start with chapter number 18 to 30, right? And then grammar of those chapters, right? That's how we are going to do. Um, where were we? Oh God, yeah. So this goat has had enough of uh, being uh, attached, right? Being, uh, what? Tied, being tied in the chamber, so it wanted to be free. One day, uh, the goat wins or climbs the mountain, but there, the goat meets the fox. Oh, fox is renard, loo is wolf, right? So, uh, the goat, El, long control the loo, she met the wolf. Alors, le monstre s'avança et les petites cornes, con, C-O-R-N-E-S, means horns, on clair means started, on dons. So, therefore, the monster advanced and the small horns started dancing. Ah, la brave chevrette. Ah, the brave Small, a chevrette refers to a small goat. Plus de dix fois, elle fausse le loup à reculer. So more than ten times, she forced the wolf to step back. Pendant cette heure d'une minute, la gourmande cueillait encore un bras de sa chair, head, puis La party, au combat, la bouche pleine. So, Trev, Trev, okay, Trev, it's uh, one of the cultures, and there's also a question as well, which we'll be discussing in a few minutes. Trev is like when there's an official gap or a pause in a war, right, or in a fight. That, okay. So, during the breaks of one minute, uh, the greedy, Gulmont greedy, collected uh, some of, uh, a bit of his dear herb, okay, like the wolf wants to eat the goat, right? So they are like conveying that the wolf is going to cook the, maybe they, the wolf is going to cook the goat with the favorite herb. So, uh, right? And then divided in the fight or in the combat uh, with the mouthful. Okay, la bouche plan mouthful. So la dura toute la nuit, so this, fight lasted for the whole night. De temps en temps, la chef de de Monsieur Sagouin de garder les étoiles dansait dans le ciel clair et elle se disait, oh, 
in the chapter it's referred as man again, so to the man and the ones who live with man, right? They are the domestic animals. And second, there's animals of ash and what are the wild animals? Les, les animaux sauvages sont les animaux sont les animaux qui nuisent l'autre et I do the wrong A here. And the other write like this, says animal. Right, to have a good flow. In the sentence, so domestic sound is animal, key stab are long. A says animal, abit avec long. Right, that sounds much better. So A says animal, and these animals, uh, abit. Les forêts ou les montagnes or in the mountains. Third one, nommé quelques animaux domestiques. Okay, so let's name few domestic animals. La chien, la chat. La chèvre, etc., sont les animaux domestiques. Dog, cat, goat, etc., are the domestic animals. And now let's name a few wild animals. Quelques animaux sauvages, question number four. Okay. La sondrie. Lose la renard, la loup, etc. sont les animaux sauvages. So the wild boar, the bear, the Fox, the wolf, etc. So les animaux are the wild animals. First two I am erasing now. Question number five. Question number five. Nommez les animaux devenus les personnages uh, dans les fables de la Fontaine. Right. So name the animals uh, who became the characters in the fables of Fontaine. Right. So we need to name a few animals. We can name. Okay, you can write in that way as well. Like animals who harm, animals who live. Uh, who don't harm, who are there to serve people, like, there are like two, three lines given in the chapter, right? You can write in that way, you can be specific with the animals. Rather be specific, that's better. La lièvre, the hare, the rabbit, la lapin, la loup, the wolf, goose, bear, etc. Four are enough. You can write five or six as much as you want. Those sont les animaux qui ont devenu who became des personnages 
to became the characters dans les fables de la fontaine. Perfect. Number six, we have question twelve. Quelle différence y a-t-il avec la P? Mm. So what's up twelve? Twelve as I discussed during the text uh, that it's a pause. Now we are writing the exact definition that I got from the net, okay, in French. So I'm writing the definition. And uh, that's a twelve. And what's a, what's peace? Peace is the opposite of war. Right. When there's no war, that's peace. Right. So Pay la contrat the guerre or the compa. Right. See, there are like no, one more answer that I have written, I have written two answers. One could be, quand tu fais la pause, pendant le combat, c'est très. Et quand il n'y a pas de guerre, c'est la paix. So when you take a pause during the war, that's a threat. And when you don't have any war as such, that's peace, right? But the exact definition of threat that I got was that Yun Trev. A Trev? I don't know the English counterpart, sorry for that. Say Yun Sesasyon. Provisoire de combat par convention. B. Belligerent. So there's a twelve. That it's a provisional cessation of the provisional stop or the pause uh, between the wars or the combat by the agreement of the belligerents. Okay, and P. You can write it as this. That. Huh? You can simply write it in other way as well. Like instead of writing when there is no war, it's peace. You can simply write that peace is the opposite of war, right? So, la paix et la contraire de la guerre. Easy, right? Simple. So I have given you two alternative answers. You can write any. The first alternative, I can read it once again. Quand tu fais la pause pendant le combat, c'est trèf. Et quand il n'y a pas de guerre, c'est la paix. That's the alternative answer, and this is also there. You can write any of the two. Uh, seventh, pourquoi la chef de M. Sagouin gagna t la montagne? Why did she climb the mountain? Because she wanted to be free, right? Because she was tired being attached in that, uh, being tied in that, uh, what? Chamber. So, La chèvre de Moussien Seguin euh, gagna la montagne sorry, montagne gagna la montagne Pasca, Pascal, Vule être libre. She wanted to be free. L I B R E, libre. And now the last question of this chapter. What 
que we have. Vous savez comment s'appelle l'oiseau qui chante dans la femme ou le, au lever du soleil. So what? So okay. What is the bird? What is the name of the bird who sings in the farm uh, when the sun rises? What's that? Uh, which bird is that? A cock, right? Writing full sentence for subjective question. Uh, by paraphrasing the question. L'oiseau qui chante dans la femme au lever du soleil s'appelle coq easy with this we put a halt for today's video so Stay tuned for you to do that's all for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn French as well. And if you have any doubt or suggestion, you may write that in the comment section below. You may also like my Facebook page by the same name, Learn French as well. See you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Au revoir. N'oubliez pas que l'on s'en sait de l'amour.